So I think it's pretty safe to say that I think trash about trash way more than the average person. And I joke about this often, but I really do believe that trash is like the gateway drug of environmentalism. It is a portal for understanding a number of interconnected issues. And unlike attempting to visualize something like carbon emissions, it's incredibly tangible. It's very relatable. Everyone has a relationship and an experience to trash. And the thing is, is that it has so much to teach us, not only about the world around us, but about ourselves. So I will ask you to humor me for a moment and close your eyes. Focus on your breath for a second and feel the weight of your body being held up by wherever you're sitting. Inhale and exhale. Now think about something, an object, that you know is bad for the environment, but use anyways. It can be anything that is disposable, single use, or that quickly goes from usefulness to trash. And create a very vivid picture of this object in your mind. Imagine that you're holding it in your hands and get really clear about what it looks like. With your mind, begin to trace its shape, its size, its edges, visualize the colors, where, where the light is hitting it. And notice the weight of this object in your hands. What does it feel like? What is the texture like? Play around with it for a bit, get really curious. And don't be afraid of getting a little silly in your imagination. It's safe in here, I promise. So maybe imagine that you take this object up to your nose. What does it smell like? Maybe take it closer to your ears and listen. What does it sound like? What does it have to say? And begin to try to separate its use from its materials. What is this object beyond what it does for you? Think about it. Where did its journey begin? Where did its materials come from? How many places has it passed through? How many hands? How many machines? How did it even get to you? Think back to your time with this object and ask yourself, how connected or disconnected do I feel to this object? Was there attention, love, empathy? And now begin to think about what happens to it after its time with you is done. What happens to it after you throw it away? Where is a way? Ponder on this for a second. And when you're ready, open your eyes. And thank you for humoring me on that journey. I promise it was not intended to be a guilt trip. What this exercise illustrates is actually a lot more expansive and interesting. In this instance, what trash is teaching us is that we feel separate from it, disconnected. And it's a place where most of us don't really want to look. And why is that important? That is important because the image that you are seeing here is unfortunately not the stars. It is very literally what is within us a galaxy of microplastic fibers. According to Orb Media's 2017 study on microplastics, plastic fibers are found in 83% of the world's tap water. In bottled water, that number is 90%. So it's pretty safe to assume that if you drink water, you have plastic inside you. Let that sink in for a second. When we say we're going to throw something away, away is not only here on this planet, away is inside us. And as Marshall McLuhan famously said, we shape our tools and then our tools shape us. And in this case, that statement is really taken to an extreme because our tools are shaping us from the inside, changing us biologically. 
So what we're seeing here is that the facts tell a very different story than our perception. We are not only connected to our trash, we are becoming our trash. We are invisibly yet inherently interconnected to everything around us, even though our perception tells us otherwise. So as a creative, a design researcher, and generally an insatiably curious human, <laughs> this has become my obsession, like the question of how might we bridge this gap? And my life's work has been centered around figuring out different ways to think about this. This was, if you put it in the words of this, this uh, TED conference, my personal catalyst for innovation and what inspires me to do the work that I do. So I began asking myself this question of how we bridge the gap. And here are some of the things that I found. So the first one is that although we might not think about it consciously, we construct the world we live in based on the stories we tell. And this story, the story of our modern Western civilization, we humans dominate nature. We are not a part of it. This is the conditioning of our perception. It's what tells us that our mind is separate from our body, I am separate from you, we humans are most definitely separate from nature and most definitely separate from our trash. This way of understanding ourselves in relationship to the world plays out in the structures of capitalism and industrialization. We live it very prominently, particularly in our urban lives, where we can mostly only see the, the end product of a much larger system of specialization and mass production. And in this worldview, everything is understood in relationship to the center, and the center is human. We, we truly believe and have created a society from the belief that humans dominate nature and are at the center of everything. And contemporary philosopher, writer, and founder of the School of Life, Alain de Botton, captures it brilliantly when he says, the thing about modern society and why it causes anxiety is that we have nothing at its center that is non-human. We are the first society to be living in a world where we don't worship anything other than ourselves. So to put it bluntly, we are obsessed with ourselves. <laughs> In this story, all of the elements of the world are other, unless they are serving a purpose connected to us. This story fails to take into account that a way does not exist. It allows for externalities to be a part of business as usual, and for profit to be placed of social and environmental impact. So the first step is to take a look at the system of the world that we live in, beyond our perception that looks a little bit more like this. It takes unlearning our conditioning and our usual ways of being in relationship to the world. This version of the world is a lot more alive, a lot more dynamic. And it is something that actually exists as a story of other civilizations. It is a story that is very much being kept alive through indigenous communities globally, and that we're starting to see surface again in our Western ideas of the future. So in things like the circular economy, closed loop systems, and interdisciplinary understandings of the world. And it is a worldview where we actually understand that everything works in relationship to everything else. And we act from that place understanding that everything is connected and we are in a continuous conversation with everything around us all of the time. It is a living organism, a system that is breathing and living and alive. And humans are not above it. We are a part of it. And we belong to it. We, we belong to the world around us. When we wake up to this truth, we realize that nature is not a collection of resources to be used or exploited for short-term gain. Because if I understand that my actions are detrimental to one part of the system, I also understand that they are detrimental to myself. Fundamentally, how we treat the earth is a reflection of how we treat ourselves. The toiling, the pillaging, the damage, 
but also the care, the nourishment, and the regeneration. The environmental crisis is actually asking us to step into a new paradigm of how we understand ourselves in relationship to the world. It is asking us to look at all of the places where we are choosing convenience over life, competition over collaboration, extraction over rest, quantity over quality, fear over love. And it very literally starts with ourselves. This is not just a bunch of big ideas that live in our heads or in the clouds. It is a very physical reality. It is in the things that we interact with on a daily basis, the choices that we're making every minute of every day, whether to get that to-go coffee cup, what toothbrush to buy, or how to act in a way that interweaves your success with mine and that of everything else on this planet. So how does this actually work? How can we really begin to bridge the gaps between this perceived separation and this inherent interconnection, the scarcity and the enoughness, the fragmentation and the wholeness? As a creative, the way that I think about this is getting really curious and understanding very intimately how this cognitive dissonance works and identify the opportunities in order to build and create things really strategically. So one of the first things that I came to understand by doing this research is that being an environmentalist or caring about life on earth is not a binary, it's a spectrum. You don't even have to be an environmentalist to want to step into a different way of relating to the world and to ourselves. The second part is really understanding, getting really curious about the barriers towards this thing that we can call ecological empathy for lack of better words. And some of these that stand out are language, convenience, identity politics, all of these things that are where our conditioning kicks in and it doesn't allow us to see what might be beyond it. So from understanding this, I came to understand how do you actually create a process? How do you actually design for these elements where you're taking a look at the barriers and designing a path forward and opportunities? And the most interesting one by far is that it is about an emotional understanding versus an intellectual one. We are moved by our emotions. We are moved by experiences that move us in a particular direction. Then there's the intrinsic versus the external motivators, the physical versus the rational experience. We actually learn so much through our bodies and in a completely different way than we do through our minds. I don't know if you've ever had that experience where your mind is telling you one thing, but like you just can't get yourself to act on it because your gut is telling you otherwise. And then there's the perspective versus the behavior drivers. And this is an interesting one because they, they begin interweaving after a certain point. And then there's obviously the active versus the passive exploration, which has to do with that physical experience and building for that emotional understanding. So one of the ways, the many ways in which this research has come to life in my work is through literality an NGO that I co-founded with two of my best friends in the streets of Brooklyn. And it is very literally a mobile dancing trash pickup party. And what we did here was really to bridge intentional design, systems thinking, mindfulness with play in order to be able to create a container where people could have an emotional, embodied, and collective experience that completely reimagined what is possible because at the end of the day when i say trash your first association is definitely not joy <laughs> or community or music so it is a way of connecting people through environmental action through fun because to be honest and i keep coming back to this what is the point of the revolution if we can't dance creating a new version of the future should fundamentally be about designing a healthier, more vibrant future for all of us. And although I'm well aware that literality is not the solution to all our problems, it is a humble embodiment of what is possible 
when we begin to look at something as mundane as trash with new eyes and an insatiable curiosity. It is a way in which we can begin to emotionally reconnect to ourselves, to others, and to the world around us. It is the beginning of possibility because only when we exhaust what we know is possible, can we begin to create space for something much bigger and much more inspiring than simply sorting our trash or even reducing carbon emissions, although that's important. The environmental crisis is actually giving us an opportunity to take a closer look at our humanity and at the stories that we've chosen to believe about ourselves and the world around us. It is an opportunity to very literally reclaim our power to create the world we actually want to live in. Thank you.